Do you remember when finding a doctor in Pennsylvania was next to impossible? 20 years ago, soaring insurance costs drove Pennsylvania's doctors out of state and denied Pennsylvania citizens access to the quality care they needed. Pennsylvania was no man's land for doctors until Harrisburg stepped in to stop the exodus of Pennsylvania's finest physicians. Thankfully, those days are over, but they could soon return. A state Supreme Court rule change could take Pennsylvania back to the future, making it harder for doctors and hospitals to get the liability insurance coverage they need, and driving Pennsylvania back into another healthcare crisis. We may be headed for a showdown in the state capitol over medical liability insurance and time is running out. So, if your health and the health of your family depends on easy access to your doctor, then you won't want to miss this special edition of Formula for a Crisis. Thanks for joining us. I'm Bob Oltmans. Not long ago, insurance companies were denying coverage to scores of Pennsylvania doctors, forcing them to move out of state or simply retire, leaving many Pennsylvanians without access to their doctor. The problem was something called venue shopping, a legal strategy that gave trial lawyers great flexibility in selecting where to hold a medical insurance case. And that's important because parts of Pennsylvania are known for some of the largest jury awards. And now, the Supreme Court's Civil Procedural Rules Committee is considering a return to venue shopping and putting access to health care for Pennsylvania residents at risk once again. So today we're going to dive into this issue with some of the leaders in Pennsylvania's health care, legal and business communities and explore what's likely to happen if the Supreme Court rule takes effect. Joining me at the table today is Dr. Daniel Glunk, a physician from Williamsport and a former president of the cha and chairman of the Pennsylvania Medical Society. Anis Adnani, a medical student at the Geisinger Commonwealth School of Medicine in Scranton. And Chris Fisher, Director of Quality Initiatives for the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, which represents the state's long-term care facilities that serve the elderly and disabled communities. Thank you all for joining us. Dr. Glunk, uh, this seems like deja vu all over again. I thought well, this issue was settled back in 2002. Why are we talking about this again? Well, 2000s, the early 2000s, were really a turbulent and chaotic time in healthcare in Pennsylvania. The medical liability crisis was causing physicians to question whether to stay in Pennsylvania to retire, as you mentioned. Liability insurance was becoming in, unaffordable. And because of that, Pennsylvania had a reputation across the nation as a place not to come and practice medicine. And because of that, some of the things that you alluded to were all coming to fruition. Because of the foresight of Chief, Chief Justice Cappy and the court at that time, and the tort reforms that were put in place, the liability climate in Pennsylvania improved dramatically. And with that, I mean improved because patients still got the chance to bring forth cases in the counties where these events occurred, but also it brought stability to the marketplace. And it became, again, that Pennsylvania was a place to practice. Now, fast forward, as you mentioned, they're attempting to change those rules, and we're going to end up back where we were at that time. And in this time of significant healthcare changes, the last thing we need to do is introduce something like this. So those who are proposing this, really the burden falls on them to make changes, and the arguments I've heard are weak at best. So what's this going to mean for patients if this happens? Patients were, were really concerned during the early 2000s because they saw doctors leaving. They weren't sure where they're going to get their health care. And as you can imagine with some of the changes that are, having, that are occurring now in health care, add this on to that, it's going to be a significant impact for the patients. Chris. Pennsylvania is one of the oldest populations in the country. Yes. So what would a, this rule change mean for long-term care facilities and elderly patients? Absolutely. I mean, back when this initiated, back in the early 2000s, patients are now sicker. There's more needs. You're providing more specialist needs in the facilities, cardiology services, dialysis service, psychiatric services. It's a challenge to find physicians even to come in to provide those services and keep that continuum of care. And something like this goes in a place where it's already a tight environment and a challenging environment, it makes it almost nearly impossible. I mean, 70% of your seniors are probably going to need long-term care at some point. 
100% are going to need a physician services. Uh, Anise, you're a second year medical student uh, here in Pennsylvania. Uh, you're from Pennsylvania. Um, I would imagine that it would be preferable for you to practice medicine sure. here at home once you uh, begin uh, practicing medicine. But what does this mean to you? What do you think of all this? Well, I think it's going to make other states much more attractive. It's going to make my decision to stay in my home state a lot more difficult than it needs to be. Um, because me and my colleagues, we, we agree on this. The fact that the increasing medical student loan burden is something we have to consider with any decision on to where we practice. And if the state is enacting rule changes that adversely affect that decision, we may decide to, to go to another state to practice. Dr. Glunk, you've heard this song before, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And, you know, we did a lot of research back then. And one of the things that we found is that if we could get a Pennsylvania student to go to school in Pennsylvania for medical school and then do their residency, then they were much more likely to stay. And so we put a lot of effort into producing a state where people wanted to come and practice. And we start down this road, that's going to ruin a lot of years of work. So, Chris, what would this mean for uh, hospital patients um, if this kind of a rule is enacted? Potentially, the patients may have to look to another hospital that's not in their backyard or in their neighborhood that's close by. They might have to go hours to find the medical care and needs that they need. And we're trying to bring bright minds into the industry overall, perspective-wise. They're not going to have those minds to tap into and get better health care overall and collaborate on best practices that are out there. Some of the hardest hit were some of the specialties. So OBGYN, some of the high-risk procedural surgery physicians that their malpractice costs just went skyrocketing and with that um, stopped delivering babies some of the maternity units closed so yes people did have to drive further and you know there's already at this point in time because of health care reform some of those things have uh, progressed so I just hate to see something like this added to the top of it and he's under the current rules um, would you say that Pennsylvania is an attractive place to practice medicine? I would, especially for the people that have it as their home state, but even people aren't here, um, don't have this as their home state. They would love to practice here. They go to school here. They want to go down to Philly or go down to Danville, for example, from my school. They do re the residency there, and they would definitely like to stay. But like you were saying, especially with the high-risk specialties, I have peers that want to do thoracic surgery, that want to do neurosurgery, and they're going to have to look back at we're at a, a more hostile environment. We have to go to different states to do what we want to do, to do what we love for our patients. Chris, um, you know, Pennsylvania has n no shortage at the moment of long-term care facilities for, for the elderly. Um, might that change? It has changed. It started to change. As a former nursing home administrator, and I started as a social worker back in the early 2000s in the industry, we've seen change of ownerships, sales to groups of members outside of the state of Pennsylvania coming in with no experience. You're seeing people that have had experience for many years leave the industry and sell. You've seen closures, and then you've also seen other facilities that don't have the same type of tort protections that the physicians may have with some of the claims, taking out ads and bringing in lawsuits into the state and getting trying to get large damages against them, and then even to operate in one county, say Mechanicsburg, Cumberland County area, and take that down to Philadelphia and put me down there in an environment where I'm more at risk, it's going to close more doors, force more sales, and get a lot of people out that have done a lot of good to the Commonwealth. So what does it mean for patients? At the end of the day, it's going to mean care and services. At the end of the day, their quality will diminish, and they will have to transfer to further locations, maybe even out of state for the services, unfortunately, depending on how significant this becomes. You know, I just want to comment on what Annis was saying in terms of the residencies and, and medical schools and our medical students. Because if we recreate that environment that was occurring in the 2000s, we are going to poison them from staying here. Um, so much happens during that period of training. And Pennsylvania trains a lot of physicians for this country. And we have the opportunity to capture those and have them practice here. But if this environment becomes hostile again, we're going to lose them. Right. Yeah, the elephant in the room is our loan burden. Uh, my peers have over 
an average over three hundred thousand dollars in loans that we have to think about. We don't like to think about it, um, but at the end of the day, when we're deciding where to practice, you have to take that into account, or you're you're only hurting yourself. From a medical student's perspective, do would other states look more attractive? Are there specific states that would look more attractive to you? Yes, um, there are other states that have. Uh, tort reform laws that ensure that malpractice premiums are, are lower than they need to be. Um, there's other states that have more hospitals, have more places to work, and ultimately there's coastal cities that people will like to go closer to the beach mm -hmm. maybe and be in that environment. Um, but again, that financial decision is crucial. There are other hospitals offering loan repayment, offering lower premiums, offer all these benefits that are very attractive to us. So if we see maybe the state doesn't want us here as much, we're gonna we're gonna look to other options. Uh, Dr. Glump, we only have a couple minutes left. Um, you, were, you were mentioning some of the higher risk practice areas like OBGYN. Um, are OBGYN practices really taking a careful look at this proposed rule change and th making plans or thinking already about perhaps leaving Pennsylvania? I don't think we've gotten to that point yet where people are actually thinking about leaving, but I'll tell you, this has gotten their attention. And um, that'll be part of the consideration. Um, as Anna said, there are plenty of options across this country. It is a marketplace, and people will <coughs> be attracted to those places that seem to want to provide a hospital, hospitable environment. At the same time, you know, we want to try to keep those who've trained in Pennsylvania because they will be the ones that stay here. And that's why it's so important we don't screw this up. Well, that's going to have to be the last word for now because we're out of time for this segment. But I want to thank all three of you for joining us for this very important discussion. Dr. Daniel Glunk, Chris Fisher from the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, and Anna Sednani, future uh, medical, uh, current medical student and future doctor in Pennsylvania, we hope. Thank you again for, for joining us. Okay. Now, when we come back, we're going to hear from the business community. What will venue shopping mean for employers and access to your doctor? And what are the broader implications for the Pennsylvania's economy? We'll get into that and more with the president of the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association when we come back. Don't go away. Make your voice heard on the looming threat to healthcare in Pennsylvania. Failure to act now could jeopardize your access to quality and timely health care. Your voice is important, but time is running out. The state Supreme Court will only accept public comments until Friday, February 22nd. Don't let a threat become a crisis. Visit the Pennsylvania Medical Society website today and make your voice heard. But you must comment no later than Friday, February 22nd. For more information, visit the Pennsylvania Medical Society website don't let this threat become a crisis.